Hello everybody, thank you so much for joining me here for another video on my channel. Today we are talking about eight tips that I have for you about the Celestron Origin. So if you're interested in picking one up or you already own a Celestron Origin, these are definitely for you. If you're new to the Celestron Origin, I do have a complete and in-depth review of this smart telescope and what it can do from your front yard over on a separate video. I'll link it right here. Uh, please do check it out. It goes over everything about the app to the telescope specifications and what just makes this telescope so special. I have recently acquired my own. I traded my big astro imaging rig for one of these and I know that's probably going to land me in astrophotography jail with some of you but <laughs> I'll take the heat for it. It's okay. I just decided I wanted something more simple, more easy to use and something that I can set up and pack down in a matter of just five minutes and the, the origin certainly fits that bill. Now after having this now for a little while I I've learned some things along the way of kind of do's and don'ts and some things that I've thought about when purchasing this that I want to relay to you guys. So these are going to be eight tips that I have for your Celestron Origin. So let's dive right on it. The first thing I want to talk about is when you first set up your origin for the night and you do its first initialization for the night. You power the mount on, you connect your Wi-Fi, and the telescope just starts doing its whole automated routine from there. But what you really need to make sure, especially if you are from Bortle 7, 8, or nine skies and you have one of these you want to make sure that your initialization is done with the clear filter in the front here so your filter drawer slider up front you'll want the clear filter or you can put a uv ir cut filter in there if you want to prevent bloating of the stars a little bit because a nebula filter cuts down so much light pollution and it only allows certain band passes of light to come through it is really hard for the origin to see enough stars in the field of view to decipher the plate solving it needs to do successfully for the initialization. The second tip that I have for you is what filters to use for what types of objects. There's basically two types of filters that you can use with the Celestron Origin. It's going to be either broadband or it's going to be narrowband. Broadband is going to be either the standard clear filter that ships with the Origin natively or you can purchase a light pollution broadband filter that will increase the contrast of the background a little bit and will certainly help with some of the colors that are in the image from a light pollution perspective and those filters are going to be your best friend for galaxies globular clusters open clusters and also reflection nebula something like the pleiades is a reflection nebula that really blue nebula surrounding the pleiades open cluster this is typically what broadband filters are good for. Now on retrospect, narrowband filters are going to be pretty much only for emission type nebula, something like the Eagle Nebula, the Swan Nebula, objects like that. And then also for supernova remnant like the Crab Nebula and the Veil Nebula are really good also with narrowband. The thing with narrowband though is because they are only letting in a certain amount of light, you do have to make sure that you're selecting the correct type of target because if you have your nebula filter in there and you go over to something like M13, the origin's really going to struggle to pull in the light that you need to really resolve M13. So just quickly think about the type of objects that you want to take and figure out which of the two options you need to go with for your filter choice. The third tip I have for you is I would suggest getting some sort of padded protection for your optical tube assembly. Because the optical tube houses not only the optics in the camera here, but in the back, you have all of the brains of the operation. You've got your computers back here, your fan, your autofocusing motor. This is a very delicate optical tube, and you do not want to just lay this on the back of the car and take it on a bumpy road and have it bouncing all over and falling off if you have to slam on the brakes because somebody cut you off on the freeway type of situation. You want to protect this, so please get yourself some thumb 
foam, a case for it, or even the Celestron Origin bag that I use with mine is a great way to store your Origin because not only does it protect it, but it fits really, really snug, and it has about an inch and a half of foam on each side. So you really want to take care of this optical tube because this is all of the beauty and the brains of this entire system. The fourth tip I have for you is simply you have to be patient, unfortunately, with telescopes. Because you are photographing in low light scenarios, you're going to have to be patient and take time to expose these targets. And you have to remember the longer you expose them, the more detail comes out, the more color comes out, the more nebulosity comes out. And that's really where you get the winning photos. These pictures that you see on Astronomy Picture of the Day and some of these other websites, these folks take 10, 20, 30 plus hours sometimes on targets and they shoot the same target night after night for almost a month to collect all that data together that they can comprise a really award-winning photo. And there's nothing that says you can't do it with the origin. You just have to be patient in your approach. The next tip I have for you is to run the fans at all times, regardless if you're in the winter or the summer, please run the fans because the computer module gets quite hot by itself. I remember using my ASI Air Pros and those got quite toasty even though they were open to the outside air and they don't have a fan in them. So the origin being enclosed already and the air is a little bit more restrictive, the computer inside will get warm. So please run the fans at all times to prevent any overheating and it will stabilize the optics in the tube. Number six is after you have gotten your imaging rig ready for the night and you are ready to rock and roll on a full night of imaging on whatever target you want to use, I would suggest tweaking one single setting and that is how long your exposures are for the origin. For right now, we only have Altasmeth and the default is 10 seconds if you're using broadband filters and 15 seconds if you're doing narrowband filters. I would personally switch that to 15 seconds for all because 15 seconds will save your onboard memory by 33%. If you think about this for just a second, if we're taking 10 second pictures, three of them is 30 seconds. So for every 30 seconds is three files, right? 10, 20, and 30. If you swap it to 15, it's only 15 and 30. So you eliminate one frame every 30 seconds, essentially, which really helps out with your onboard memory. Because the onboard memory is only, I believe, 64 gigs, uh, but minus the operating system and everything, I think you have like 50 is what is available to you uh, just natively from the origin out of the box. It's 50 gigabytes. So in that 50 gigabytes, though, you can save a third of that if you just tweak the setting time to 15 seconds instead of the standard 10. Number seven, for those that are more serious about astrophotography and really want to get the most out of their images, I always want to suggest that you post-process your images that you capture, regardless of what telescope you're using it with. Even if it's with the Sea Star, or if it's with an Origin, or if it's with, you know, a $10,000 huge big rig that you have been able to afford and put in your backyard observatory, you always want to take those to a computer and post-process them for much better detail and resolution. Because even though the iPad screen will show you an image that is worthy of sharing with your friends or family, if you take it into Photoshop or PixInsight or Cyril or whatever your favorite astro imaging software may be, you can increase color, increase detail, separate stars from the nebulosity and increase the clarity of the nebula and make the stars brighter or dimmer or whatever you want to do with the image, but it'll look totally different than what it looks like on your iPad screen. So I always suggest post-processing your images to get the most out of every single target that you ever capture. My last tip here for you guys regarding the Celestron Origin is simply to adjust your AI settings in the application when you're running for a night of imaging. Typically the live view that 
you are seeing on either your iPad screen or whatever device you use to run your Origin is not necessarily the most realistic of them, is what I like to say, because things like the AID noise and the AID convolution, and even sometimes the AI background gradient removal can affect the image in kind of weird ways. It can either make all the stars just look like white dots instead of them having color. You can darken the image with the gradient removal tool instead. Sometimes I uncheck that one and the image gives a little bit of gray back to the background, which actually makes it more realistic. The idea is to be able to look at the targets in a near live view state with live stacking to see them in an electronically assisted way. And by doing that and getting the most out of the image, you'll want to tweak your AI settings to deliver an image that you think looks best to you. As always, thank you so much for joining me. I'm excited to have an origin now and push my astrophotography into a more simplistic way, and I hope you'll follow along for all the objects that I have lined up to try out with the Celestron origin. As always, clear skies. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time.